first visited the Sea of Cortez to study marine ecology. Exploring many amazing places along the Baja California coastline, I soon realized I had slipped into one of the most vibrant places on the planet. I had heard about people in this region creating solutions to the worldwide problem of overfishing. I wondered if they could be an example of hope amidst industries that decimate marine life. I returned to the Sea of Cortez to discover sustainability in a world of vast consumption. There are some real alarming downward trends in productivity from the base of the food chain all the way on. Over 50% of the world's oceans are overexploited. Huge factory ships that can process hundreds of tons of fish an hour are out there on the seas. I wanted to better understand the global overfishing predicament, so I worked on a shrimp fishing boat for a night. For every pound of shrimp caught, generally eight to 12 pounds of non-intended animals are discarded, dead. If this is representational of fishing practices worldwide, no wonder overfishing is the biggest threat to our oceans. I continued my journey to find examples of what people can actually do about the depletion of our seas. I continued on until I arrived at Laredo National Marine Park. We take care of all the natural protected area. We have two non-take areas where you can only watch you can't catch, okay? We try to keep those places in order that the fish start to reproduce and spread all over the park. In order to avoid illegal fishing, we give them some alternatives. People submit sustainable projects. The project is good, we support them with the money. For an ecosystem to be protected, people have to be able to survive through jobs that don't decimate the environment. I first met with members of an eco-union where many of the tour guides have been fishing commercially for five or more decades. Now they take people to learn about and enjoy an ecosystem rather than destroy it. There are people who are monitoring the nautic areas. The populations are stable. There are nine fishing cooperatives that are unique because they have received third-party certification for having a sustainable fishery. We have an evaluation every year. We know how much abalone we have in our territory, so we decide how many tons we're going to take. Now it's uh, almost stabilized. What you see in the co-ops in this area is guardians and conservationists in practice. It's part of their responsibility as users of the resource. As more organizations see the success, even small success, of these community-based management programs, then that will attract more programs for the sustainable projects in their community. Through this trip, I experienced how people's efforts do make a difference, even on the global scale. We may feel as if the only way to survive is through out-consuming each other. And if we don't take advantage, someone else will. But the abalone and lobster collectors organized a healthy approach to the ecosystem and economy, where in most other places, the abalone is almost extinct. So we can collaborate to define how we will pass on our planet to the next generations. I love how even small efforts can change entire industries and government policies and connect with the whole planet.